Our human body is like a large orchestra where every cell plays its own part. Somehow, sometimes these cells turn rogue and they behave abnormally. So the treatment of cancer has evolved over so many decades where initially we used to treat patients with systemic treatments like chemotherapy. Hi, I'm Dr. Vashisht Maniar, a medical oncologist at Mumbai Onco Care Center, which is a chain of daycare cancer centers spread across the city of Bombay. I'm here to talk about what is cancer. When somebody, you or your family member is diagnosed with cancer, the first question that strikes is, what is cancer? What did I do to get this cancer? Did I not eat well? Am I endowed with bad genes? Am I unlucky? These are the first questions that strike when you are diagnosed or your family relative is diagnosed with cancer. Our human body is like a large orchestra where every cell plays its own part. Somehow, sometimes these cells turn rogue and they behave abnormally. There is a very strong checkpoint system in our human body to take care of these cells and their growth is stopped immediately. This happens millions of times every second we breathe. However, occasionally, sometimes these checkpoint systems do fail and these rogue or abnormal cells, which are called as mutant or mutation driven cells, often become more powerful and they start controlling the cells in and around them. When this process is localized to one area, it is called as a localized tumor or a cancer. If this disease is not stopped, when it is localized, it often tends to spread to other organs of the body, which is called as metastasis or a metastatic cancer. So the treatment of cancer has evolved over so many decades where initially we used to treat patients with systemic treatments like chemotherapy, where they were like mindless bullets, often killing the good cells along with the bad cells, not having specific targets, because we at that point of time did not know why these cancers happened. What has changed over the last few decades is understanding of the human genome better. And now we believe that there is a strong genetic basis on why these cancers happen. These mutations often are endowed at the level of the cell which drives these cells and leads to carcinogenesis. There has been a paradigm shift in how we manage cancers from giving systemic chemotherapy to most patients of metastatic cancer. Now we have come to the day and age where we provide bespoke or personalized therapy. As we understand that there is a genetic basis to these cancers, these cancers are driven by molecular abnormalities at the level of the cell. So, identifying the molecular abnormality that your or your beloved's cancer has and targeting it with very specific anti-cancer therapy is going to be the treatment of the future and of the present as we speak. Previously, treatment used to be driven by simple histopathology reports of adenocarcinoma, squamous cell carcinoma. The pathology reports used to end there. That is not where we stop. In our quest to understand the disease better, we do what is called as NGS or next generation sequencing, which is a comprehensive genomic profiling. Like we profile ourselves as human beings, we need to profile your enemy, which is the tumor here, to understand what drives their growth and hence try and find out specific mutations which lead to their survival over the other normal cells. Once we understand these mutations, we often look for targets which can kill these mutations, specific targeted therapy which is aimed at killing these cancer-causing genetic mutations. With NGS platforms now becoming generic, these tests now come at a dime a dozen where you have multiple such platforms available. So how do you as a cancer patient or caregiver of a patient of cancer choose amongst these? What you should look for is credibility, validation. Have these tests been validated, approved by various regulatory authorities like the US FDA, the National Cancer Comprehensive Network, NCCN, the ESMO, the European Society of Medical Oncology or maybe the, even the Indian Society of Medical and Pediatric Oncology. Do they conform to international standards and guidelines is something that you should seek for before 
you get these tests done for your relatives sharing a recent example of one of my patients i had a 56 year old lady who was diagnosed with a metastatic intrahepatic cholangiocarcinoma which means that it was arising in the biliary radicals sitting within the liver unfortunately the disease had spread to the lung the liver as well as the peritoneal cavity the standard protocol for these patients is palliative intent chemotherapy which is a combination of platinum and gemcitabine we did discuss that uh, since it's overall a very poor disease biology considered as a very aggressive cancer with a median survival which often does not extend beyond few months we discussed the addition of tests to understand the genetic behavior of this disease better and while we did start this patient on palliative intent chemotherapy we noticed that at the end of the first cycle of chemotherapy unfortunately her tumor markers had started increasing beyond what they already were when we started the fluid collection in her, in her lungs had worsened we were already contemplating shifting her to second line chemotherapy that is when the ngs report uh, did come with us because it takes about 2 to 3 working weeks for these reports to come it opened up a, a plethora of options for us she was positive for what is called as a erbb to b3 mutation which is a normal paralance called as her2 mutation which we commonly see in breast cancer we added the therapy which is specific for that mutation called as trastuzumab to her routine chemotherapy list which she already was on and by the time we reached two more cycles of chemotherapy she started responding very well where the pleural fluid started coming down the aseptic fluid started coming down and the disease started shrinking at the end of six cycles of chemotherapy plus the targeted therapy which we could add based on the mutational report she had a fantastic partial response where the disease had further regressed at this point of time we had the option of either waiting and watching waiting for the disease to worsen or further acting on the other mutations that the report offered us what was interesting was that that was not the only mutation that the disease was expressing it was also co-expressing other mutations like cdk4 62 we further targeted this mutation with oral tablets with drugs which are called as cdk46 inhibitors now available in india as well along with a combination of targeted therapy which she previously was on and i'm extremely happy to share that it's been about 3 months since she's been on these therapies and the tumor markers have further regressed not only are we controlling the disease better here but we were able to offer her a fantastic quality of life as well where currently she is on two different targeted therapy drugs continues to enjoy her routine activities and is uh, living a normal life with her disease under good control and remission so what this experience uh, taught me as an oncophysician was the fact that even when we are dealing with advanced malignancies where there are no defined practices for example in lung cancer we have a predefined mutational analysis model that is not the case with most other solid cancers where we are often at a loss of targeted options one should consider in advanced cancers to look for specific bespoke mutations and targeting the disease better i think one thing that i can definitely vouch for is the fact that we've gone beyond the time where we have only uh, targeting uh, the cancer cells with high dose chemotherapy uh, the time has come where we start looking at specific mutations and target them and you would expect the cancer genome to start behaving very differently your cancer is unique and so should be your treatment